Hello, everybody! Hello, welcome to the Share Warehouse. My name is Paul. I will be your guide. Welcome, one and all. So, today's game is probably the most requested game so far to be shared on the Share Warehouse. We'll have these polls every once in a while, but this is a 1994 shareware game called Hocus Pocus. Now, in this little game, which is kind of a, it's a platformer for sure, but it's kind of Mario-esque and a little bit of, I don't know, I, I got kind of a, a new school Castlevania vibe, like the, like the Game Boy Advance types of Castlevania games. Anyway, so you're this little wizard dude named Hocus Pocus, and you want to join the magical council of wizards, but the wizards are like, um, hey, you kind of goofed off in school a little bit, so you go do our chores for us and go do some dangerous tasks, and whatever the laws of this land are, you cannot marry your childhood sweetheart unless you are on the council of wizards. So you go off and blah, 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 and that, that's pretty much all the story you need. It's in a day before cutscenes, so you really have to make a commitment. If you really want to know the story, you've got to go and hunt for it. Now, in this era of Apogee, this is really when they hit, well, their, their Apogee, their Zenith, as it will. Everything has such an extra layer of polish on it, but almost too much so. It looks a little bit... Now, a lot of games that they are a little bit too futuristic, a little bit too shiny. And because of all the extra animation, a lot of these games could not run on a lot of people's computers. You needed either a really good 486 or a, a new Pentium, which I think at this time were prohibitively expensive and fairly new. I don't know. It seemed like a really weird business model, but it's really gorgeous. It's got this really hand painted feel to it. And look at Hocus Pocus. You can see what I mean with that kind of shiny look. It just looks like he's made out of plastic and rubber. So anyway, it's a beautiful game. The whole thing is basically, it's a score hunt and you have to hunt down these crystals. You'll see a little crystal counter down there in your lower, uh, well, not even lower corner. It's just there, there's your crystal. And right there at the beginning, it, it shows you that there's a crystal there, so you can see. And you can also shoot up, you can shoot down. You can only shoot one at a time, which is not that great because these little lightning bolts that you shoot are not that powerful. But going back to the Castlevania thing, wouldn't this be wonderful? I thought, as I was playing through this game, if it had kind of a Castlevania RPG-ish kind of feel to it, you know, like every time you killed enemies, because you don't get points for killing enemies. They're just there to get in the way. And seeing as this is sort of a score grind, it makes sense, you know, that you would get points for killing enemies, but whatever. But um, I just picked up the ability to use two lightning bolts at the same time, which is, I think, about as powerful as you can get. I don't think there are any other power-ups. Might be wrong. Another nice little touch in Hocus Pocus in the art design is when he jumps and falls. You know how when you, like, when you jumped off a platform in Super Mario World, his little hat would fly up a little bit, like it's kind of adding, I don't know, that was the opposite of gravity. Anti-gravity? I don't know. You're falling and your hat is flying around. So you do this and you fall and your cape kind of zips up. But it zips up at this really weird, perfect 45 degree angle, which I don't know, it just looks weird. It looks like he's sliding down an invisible wall. It's like, Ee! So a little bit more background on this one. I noticed when I booted up the game, the little DOS prompt, before it even went into the game, it said, hey, all these instruments and stuff that you're hearing is all copyright and thanks to George Sanger. Now, for those of you who don't know who George Sanger is, AKA the Fat Man, if you played the seventh guest or just innumerable DOS games, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but look them up on Google. There'll be a link down in the description to check out his work. One of the most prolific uh, video game composers of the 90s, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe not the most influential, but definitely one of the best. Seventh guest soundtrack is fantastic. Check it out. But I did not find any credit to him doing the game, so it really may have just him designing the instruments and the soundscapes to use for the MIDI. So he made the instruments, and perhaps somebody else made the music? I don't know. The music has kind of a, a early Kyrandia feel to it. If you haven't played uh, Legend of Kyrandia, there's three of the games in the series, I believe. Hand of Fate and Malcolm's Revenge. And I, forget, I forget what the first one's called. It might just be called Legend of Kyrandia. But it's a fantastic game. Now, getting back to this one, the crystals and the keys, it really is just your classic key card hunt. And the lava doesn't kill you immediately, which is a very nice touch, but it'll drain the hell out of your, uh, your health, that's for sure. I'm gonna wait and pick up that crystal, because once you pick up that crystal, the level ends immediately. You, there's no level exit, it's just there. 
Another thing this game reminds me of with all the secret walls and treasures and stuff like that is a Nintendo game called Mylan's Secret Castle or Mylan or Milan, I don't know, but it's a really bullshitty game by Hudson Soft. Ridiculously difficult, too much so I think for a kid's game. But the way you found secrets in that game is just by shooting blocks that you didn't even know looked different. Oh, and by the way, the reason I didn't leave is because I wanted to get all the treasure, so that little Yahoo you heard when you pick up that last piece is sort of your signal. It's like, all right, you got everything. And here's your stats. So treasure found, 86 out of 86. So accuracy is 100%. What confused me is because I thought when I was first doing it, it was talking about my accuracy shooting with my little lightning bolt thingies. But that's not the case. It's actually talking about trans, uh, your, uh, your treasure hunting abilities. So I'm flashing forward to the next level because I think, like uh, like a lot of Mario games, it's like levels one, one, two, one, three. So you play in the same sort of art style for three levels, and then you move forward. This I think is the last set of artwork that you can see before you actually pay for the game, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So Hocus Pocus was made by a company called Moonlight Software uh, back in 1994, and they made uh, three other games, maybe more, but the ones I know about, there's one that came out in 92 called Clyde's Adventure, which I don't think I've actually ever played. A and then in 95, a year after this one came Clyde's Revenge, which is sort of an updated version of Clyde's Adventure. But what I learned as I was looking around their Facebook page and stuff, that there was actually a Kickstarter, or at least there was a Kickstarter. Here we go, I just looked it up. So it was back in July 20th of 2013, there was a Kickstarter made by a fellow named Sam Eddy, which may be the person behind Moonlight Software, as far as I know. But uh, it's called Clyde's Adventure Reborn. It unfortunately didn't make it. It only made $614 out of its original $2,500 goal. And it's a shame because it actually looks really cool. You can sort of, it's like, almost like a Mario Maker, but for a, a DOS game that only a handful of people know about. So the game really is a really, it's a good time sink. I gotta say, I never really played it when I was a child, but I heard about it. And I think I'm, actually no, I think I did play a demo of it or something, but it ran so slow on the computer I was using back then because I think it was like an early laptop, super early laptop. And it could barely run like the original Duke Nukem games and, um, not, not Halloween Harry, what was the other one? Total Carnage, I think it was, which came under another name. Uh, I don't remember. So back in this era, Apogee went by a lot of names, now that I think about it. So, Apogee was also a company called 3D Realms, which you've heard of. I think that name was invented for a game called Terminal Velocity, which we'll also be talking about sometime later on, the Share Warehouse. Really amazing game, but uh, re really disorienting. I never had too much success with it. But you'll also know 3D Realms who are going on to make the Duke Nukem 3D series, and then a couple of games further on. but. 3D Realms' name was fairly well tainted by Duke Nukem Forever, so sorry 3D Realms. Apogee also started another company called uh, Pinball Wizards, which they only used once. Again, capitalizing on the success of Duke Nukem 3D, they had a pinball game called Balls of Steel in 97. Uh, yeah, and that was pretty much it. There's a lot of shareware games, now that I think about it, that were pinball based. I think I have one lined up that I want to talk about at the share warehouse, but that'll be coming a little bit later on, so... Hey! Uh, pinball action! Get ready! I'm gonna try it for that one. Now, shareware, it began as a way that... Um, before this new model came along, that Apogee, I think... If they didn't invent, then they probably perfected it and made it popular. Oh, that's bullshitty. Thanks, game. I gotta go all the way back around. Yeah, they, these games really want to make sure you got your money's worth, and they made you run back and forth and backtrack. It was awful. Well, I mean, not awful, but I don't know. When you're a kid, you don't have a lot of patience for this kind of stuff. Anyway, so they wouldn't give away one episode or a couple of levels here and there. They would actually give you, this is pre-Apogee days, they would actually give you the entire game. Everything. And then you're like, okay, if you like it, it's on the honor system. Pay us. Pay my hands. Pay the people who made this, and you'll feel great about it. Unshockingly and unsurprisingly, it didn't really work. At, uh, putting It's not a really a sound business model, asking a bunch of probably minors and young people to fork over 25 bucks for a game they now have for free anyway. So yeah, the honor system didn't really work. So Apogee came along and was like, okay, look, here's a special version of the game just for you so you can try before you buy. And it was fantastic. It was, it was revolutionary, quite honestly. Now all the companies did it, and it's called now the Apogee Model. So each game is sold separately, you register the first episode, 
if you don't want to buy the rest of them, you register it, and then that unlocks uh, support, you get cheat codes, and all that kind of thing. I never understood the reasoning behind that one, just, you know, the registering. Because then you just get cheat codes, but, oh my god! Okay, the game does not want me to go past this port, I... Down, 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 don't get... Stop it. Stop. Oh, anyway, I don't think it's gonna be much of a surprise. I don't think I'm going to live much longer. But because of the Apogee model, and everybody else following suit, the Software Creations uh, bulletin board, that BBS we were talking about last week in uh, Commander Keen, it became the largest BBS in North America. Bar none. Yeah, I followed that. Okay, let's count how many seconds there it was. That was bullshitty game. Yeah, oh, look at all that slowdown. Oh, even I'm running at DOSBox at max cycles? This game is tough. And I was so close. I was so close. 94% of all the treasures I needed, but I didn't see how many crystals I needed. That was kind of a shame. But fortunately, it doesn't really matter because now, thanks to the new technology of saving and restoring and game states, you can actually save your game. I don't know why I was so impressed with this. I can't remember if this is something that you could do in Commander Keen or if they just expected you to do it all the way and run run through. I don't know. Now, there are a couple of screens showing the next episodes of Hocus Pocus, but unlike they did in Commander Keen, I, I hate to use that as a bench line, but it is sort of the original and most uh, beloved. They threw so they threw all these enemies and sprites and all this new stuff into the teaser images, and and, and Hocus Pocus just has you fighting a, a tree monster, and it's like, hey, that's worth another 25 bucks, right? So here's the catalog that they gave you, and there is a lot of good titles in here. Raptor, Call of the Shadows, that really amazing flying game, uh, Blake Stone, Duke Nukem 2, and <laughs> this is me discovering that I've hit F and B, I can change the colors of everything. Halloween Harry, and there it is, okay, Alien Carnage, that's why, okay. So Halloween Harry and Alien Carnage are exactly the same thing. But if you buy them in a retail store, it's going to be called Alien Carnage for some stupid reason. It's a really dumb name, but then again, so is, so is Halloween Harry. And there's everything. There's Commander Keen, $30 for three episodes. That's crazy. And then here's all the information about, um, what was it, software creations. And they even have uh, job listings down here. Programmers, artists, uh, submit your games, and maybe we can, uh, if you have a new engine, bring it along and you can join us. Now, the interesting thing also about Hocus Pocus and the other games, it is still for sale. You go to 3D Realm's website, and there it is for $4.99. Not that bad for a little bit of nostalgia, huh? I guess it probably runs in a DOS box wrapper like good old games does. And you can even buy this awesome anthology. Look at this. There's like 32 games in here for 40 bucks. And it's like Commander Keen series, a uh, Math Rescue, Mystic Towers, Raptor, Terminal, and I think they're all the full versions of the game. And it comes with a soundtrack, uh, I think a soundtrack CD with a couple of extra songs on it that are all remastered. Uh, Duke Nukem, Wacky Wheels, Biomenis, all games we'll be talking about, but I don't want to do all Apogee games all at once. Oh. But there it was, my friends. That was Hocus Pocus, a grand old game. Check it out in the comments below if you can download it, get the shareware. And if you like it, go grab it. You could probably get it on GOG as well, but you can get it directly from 3D Realms, the makers. That's all for me. I'll see you next time. And as always, good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.